Edwards around the double team. Got a look. Butter and man in full effect. It's the first day of the playoffs and we already have superstars barking at each other, clutch shots and a bunch of crazy sequences. So in Minnesota, the home crowd was fired up for this one. But it was KD who came out firing at the start of the game. Grant got to the rim nice. and lays it off glass. One of the best who's ever played the game. The Timberwolves tried Carl Towns on him in the first few minutes, but there was no way he could hang with Durant defensively, so a change had to be made. They however survived the hot shooting in the first quarter by imposing their size and dominating in the paint and on the rebound. Here's Conley, a little floater, that's his shot with the offhand and Gobert with the cleanup. That's where they're going to be tough throughout this entire series because Gobert and Towns are excellent on the offensive boards. The huge size difference allowed him to grab 24 more rebounds in the game which led to a 20-6 discrepancy in second chance points. The Timberwolves also crushed Phoenix inside, finishing the game with a 52-34 advantage in points in the paint. So when the Suns couldn't sustain the hot start in the second quarter, Minnesota pounded them down low. Just a great move, I'm shifting gears, split it, high, there's the block, but now second chance opportunity. He and his shooting coach Chris Matthews. Nice head move. inside with yeah. the jump hook. This gave them a 10 point lead at halftime, even with a quiet Edwards at 10 points at the break. But nobody was prepared for what he did in the third and began toying with Grayson Allen and even Booker, shaking him off with some phenomenal footwork. So then, Durant said, enough is enough, I got him. But Edwards said, This time, KD picks him up. Nice what a hezzy. Nice Slams fake. on the brakes. Edwards! Nice fake. Durant trying to guard him. Edwards around the double team. Gotta look. Butter. Oh, and man in full effect. Really, that, I mean, it's a surprising, but he, he went at it. And man! Oh, man. oh, he looked at his wrist and said, I got time today! Unbelievable! Edwards demolished KD as well, and he let him know about it. Man, this is an absolutely amazing scene, and I wish I was there, honestly. But I'll pick one of my Nixus games, thanks to today's sponsor, Game Time. In the past, I've been bamboozled by scalpers into getting some horrible seats, like looking at a pillar or a pipe for the entire game, and I've even straight up missed some concerts as I couldn't find any tickets. With Game Time, you can easily get tickets even last minute for concerts, theater events, sports, you name it. So, of course, I'm looking at playoff games at Madison Square Garden, and it doesn't even matter who we play, I know that it's going to be wild in there. What I love about Game Time is that it gives you this little check mark, which is a guarantee you're getting the best price. Also, it's great that you can see the view from your seat, so you know exactly what you're getting when you arrive. The app is super intuitive, so you can buy tickets in seconds, and I love that. So, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code HEATCHECK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and use code HEATCHECK for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. This explosion took Minnesota up by 19, and they never looked back, cruising to a 25 point win in Game 1. And boy, do I wish it was this easy for my Knicks, but Philadelphia stormed out to a 13-point lead on the shoulders of Joel Embiid, who was unstoppable to start the game. Shot blocked from behind, and Embiid still knocked it in. I think even Chunzo got a piece of it, but Embiid is just too strong. New York needed a spark, and it was Bogdanovich and McBride off of the second unit who quickly shot them back into this game. Off the bench, Deuce McBride a three, knocks down another. McBride up top, Bogdanovich just three-pointer, that's good. Knicks are now 6 of 12. Philly fans could not even imagine that what's about to come would take them from euphoria to a gut punch in the blink of an eye because... Margin for the net. Oh, oh, oh. Joel Embiid off the backboard, but he's holding on to that left knee. Embiid is still down, and you look at his eyes, and there's concern now for Embiid and the Sixers. What a spectacular play, but does it result in a problem? How about a man this size able to do this? Man, this was tough even as an opposing fan. I just want this dude to be fully healthy and show us everything that he can do. So as he limped off to the locker rooms, the Knicks continued the run and went from a 13 point deficit to being up by 12 at halftime. 
So after the break, this was encouraging to see. However, Embiid was not the main factor in the Sixers' comeback, but rather... We've seen that so many times. Bad pass from DiVincenzo right to Lowry. Anticipating layup is good. And the foul. Kyle Lowry once again. The handoff to Maxi. Lowry catches, fires, connects Kyle Lowry from downtown. It's Lowry had 12 points in the period. With Maxi matching him point for point, the guards led the search and made this a dramatic finish in the fourth. It was obvious that Embiid was impacted by the injury, but that didn't stop him from fighting. Fight for the rebound, and I mean a fight. And Robinson and Embiid will have a hell ball. What a battle between the two big men. This allowed Philadelphia to ultimately retain possession, leading to... The quick tip, and the Sixers get the ball. Maxey with eight on the 24, long three-pointer. It's good, Tyrese Maxey from way downtown. And on defense, they made it clear that they want the ball out of Brunson's hands, but... Cross-court Ananobi, Ananobi a three. Bang! OG Ananobi from downtown. This three was just the beginning of a wild ride, because... Kyle Lowry looks to answer and does. Lowry with a clutch three-pointer. Shot clock at four. Hart fakes. Hart tries another three-pointer. Oh, it's good! Knocks down another! What a shot by Josh Hart in the clutch to give New York a seven-point lead in this incredible finish, which ultimately would be enough for the Knicks to seal the deal in game one. The most important thing, however, would be the health and availability of Joel Embiid moving forward, as this series completely depends on that. Moving on to last year's conference finals matchup, where the Lakers came out strong in Denver, led by LeBron and AD, who combined for 14 of 21 in the first half, creating mismatches and causing the Nuggets some trouble. He catches deep and flushes, gets the Lakers first deuce. Denver especially experienced some problems during the non-Jokic minutes, as Murray had a bad first half and couldn't hold his team down with Nicola on the bench. So, in a bit of a shocker, this was a 12-point lead for LA by the middle of the second quarter, announcing a possible upset in the series opener. A steal by James, three on one, he'll take it himself and lay it in. He's got 14, and it's the largest lead of the game for the Lakers at 12. However, this sounded the alarm that woke up the championship unit for the Nuggets, and as soon as they came out of that timeout, they stormed back and played their familiar brand of basketball. The Lakers as a team, as part hits a three, they needed that. Good as he comes back down the court. Open look, Jackson, hit it, a three. The big play out of the timeout by Michael Malone and a nice shot by Porter. Great hands by Jokic to get the steal and a highlight slam for Gordon. 8-0 run by Denver out of the timeout. Despite the Nuggets coming back from that scary deficit, LeBron James still had the final say in the first half. James in the front court, hoists a three, it's good! Eight tenths of a second left, James drills a three! But the Lakers had no idea that a similar run was waiting for them in the third quarter as well, as KCP threw an avalanche of threes causing the arena to explode. Prince who had six points off the bench in the first half, swatted, Porter got the rejection. Jokic ahead to Caldwell Pope, steps into a three, and the lead is up to nine. Dangerous time here for the Lakers, trying to stay attached. Caldwell Pope gets free and hits another one. That's four threes in the quarter. Denver won this period 38-18, and coming into the final 12 minutes, the Lakers were facing an uphill battle on the road. Anthony Davis did everything he could to pull his team back into the game and LA came as close as down by 6 in the middle of the 4th, but he had zero support from his team and there's no way that one guy beats the Nuggets by himself, so Denver held on and took a 1-0 lead in the series. And here's the summary of the hardest series to watch. The Cavs had control for the entire game, led by Donovan Mitchell, who's the one guy that the Magic don't have, and this might end up being the difference in this matchup. So yeah, the first day of the playoffs was crazy, following the wild sequence of events that took place in the play-in. You gotta check out exactly what happened right here. Talk to you in the next one, peace out.